Namaste Star Family, welcome back to the Matrix Oracle. This is a pick a card in honor of the Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, November 25th all the way to December 15, 2024. So not a long retrograde. If some of you want to review Mercury in Sagittarius messages, it was from your past self. I will put the link down below to this reading if you want to refresh a little bit some of the clues uh, from this master teachings of the planet connected to the magician card, okay, and connected through the power of the throat chakra. We are creating worlds through all words, so there's a lot of self-mastery and things that are related to the throat, to our communication when we're working with Mercury. Okay, so in retrograde, we are going to channel messages from the future self. If you want to choose according to zodiac placement, I would suggest your natal Mercury placement. Okay, but you can choose according to um, some of the cards that just call you in. Okay, so let's see messages uh, from the future self. Okay, this is a card that doesn't belong here. <laughs> is there something that doesn't belong? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see that we have to remove. Uh, you know, it's all about following your weird W-Y-R-D. That's your destiny. Following the things that light up your heart and using that energy to create things that um, just bring joy and fulfillment into your life. Okay, so we have those three piles. Okay, and let's see what we have for pile number one. Ooh, the cycle breaker. You'll get through this cycle ending. Wow. Multidimensionality. This is, you know, um, as this retrograde starts, we have an alignment between the Jupiter retrograde uh, merging with the constellation of Orion. So especially Rigel, the brightest star of the constellation. And um, in opposition to... Jupiter and Rigel is going to be that Mercury retrograde. So there's going to be a lot of connection um, to your multidimensional self. And here your future self is um, for pile number one. It's all about breaking the chains uh, of karma, of the cycle you were in, or maybe that you were born into. And that is part of something um, that you wanted to manifest. Okay, I don't know why I went through a little bit of channeling here. Um, maybe some of you, there might be other messages uh, beyond just your natal placement with the zodiac signs. Um, so that's maybe something, if some of you feel like you're a karmic chain breaker, that could be uh, an important pile. Pile number two, we have ooh, the edge. Take a chance, do something different, okay, to help weird it out. <laughs> I love this. Pile number three. We have the Wisdom Keeper. Oh my God. A new perspective, study and learning. I love this. I love, I love this. The green. I, I love those cards. This is, if some of you like um, Oracle cards and tarot cards, the one that I'm using, I'm always listing down below. Okay, so let's associate this to Zodiac Placement. Okay. Up. There we go. Okay, so pile number one, we have Aries. Pile, oh, well, still the same pile. Then Virgo. <laughs> then we have Capricorn. And we have Scorpio. Beautiful. Okay. Then pile number two, we have Aquarius. We have Sagittarius. We have Pisces. And we have Cancer. Pile number three, we have Libra, Gemini, Leo, and Taurus. Beautiful. All right, so those are the pile for the message from your future self. Let's get into it. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to the messages from your future self. You chose the beautiful card of the cycle breaker. You'll get through it. 
cycle ending. Beautiful multidimensional expression of what you came here to accomplish. If you chose according to zodiac placement, we have Aries, Virgo, Capricorn, or Scorpio. I suggest picking your Mercury placement because this is a channeling uh, in honor of Mercury going retrograde. So for uh, Mercury and Sagittarius, we had messages from the past self. Maybe I'm repeating myself because there might be something you want to review okay as far as the continuation especially for you because there is this triple energy you know uh, past present and future in this card and the messages from the previous mercury and sagittarius before the retrograde was from the past self so there might be something here for you pile number one okay uh, i'm gonna keep I'm going to keep this and we'll see if I want to move them. So let's see what we have for you. Okay. All right. The card goes straight to it. You know what? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to get the cards and then we'll see what we want. Okay. All right. And another one. Okay. I love that. Okay. <laughs> don't peek don't peek all right we have spirit of isis beloved initiate they are times to surrender and let go but they are never times to give up persist with your bold faith and inspired action until the impossible happens isis has the spirit of triumph and will never fail in her quest no matter how bold or impossible it seems, let her inspire you. Believe. There's definitely something here about spirit, your communication with spirit that is important. And your future self is saying, you know, I'm with you. Like the dreams that you're trying to manifest, I'm actually here to inspire the actions and the little things, even if it doesn't seem linear and it doesn't appear like it makes sense. I feel also even the choice to be born in that ancestral lineage, in the family you were born in, with the karmic repetition and contracts that you had to face. Okay, so there's something about uh, your becoming uh, that is of the essence. I want to read to you this card. I usually don't always read the little booklets, but I felt called to, you know, pull the booklet for this. It says, okay, so the cycle breaker. Some of us have come here to heal ancestral patterns. This isn't an easy task. It's one that requires dedication, grit, honesty, Compassion, authenticity, and grace. The Cycle Breaker card is one of gentle encouragement and deep acknowledgement. If you're a Cycle Breaker, know that you are being open to healing and change. It is a revol revolutionary act. The path of breaking cycles repeated is always unique, and it's one that only the most courageous take on. Not everyone wants change because it's uncomfortable and hard to understand. The work of changing long-lasting patterns is often misunderstood and unacknowledged. For the cycle breaker shines a light on what's broken, dysfunctional, harmful or painful and says there must be another way. This is a card of acknowledging your willingness to do this work. Deep healing like this cannot be done in isolation. And often there are things at play within your system that both slow down and speed up the process. Ancestral patterns predate our lifetime and can therefore require many layers of healing. Be open to call in the support of your ancestors, future and past, who share mutual interest in you, freeing both you and them from unconsciously repeating the past. So you're getting a lot of spiritual divine support, pile number one, through this retrograde. It, and you know what? It's interesting because uh, the degrees, the angles of the zodiac that were starting this retrograde um, 
are specifically about communication with spirit. And here you are through this phase of retrograde. It's like you are granted this portal with the retrograde, with the reviewing motion, where you're going to be able to free yourself with more ease from maybe able to shine your uniqueness, your weird, and align to that authenticity, to that authentic self through the help of your past and future self. What a channeling here. If you want, uh, she has a Rebecca Campbell, some ancient stone activation, and it says, I call upon helpful, positive ancestors of future, present, and past. Free me from these unconscious patterns that are harming us all. Free us from these harmful patterns in a way that truly lasts. Okay, that's what she shared. Okay, let's see what else we have. Ooh, the blue flame. Connect to the blue flame, which is the light of pure love within you. And then, I love life. It is my birthright to live fully and freely. I give to life exactly what I want life to give me. I am glad to be alive. I love life. Okay. There's something about how you water yourself. How are you supposed to water yourself with love? I, I had something on my phone. Where's my phone? It's all the way back there. I don't know why it's so far. <laughs> but there was some, I think it was from John Campbell about, you know, when we're doing, when we're making a mistake, when we're trying to ac accomplish something and it didn't go as planned. Instead of judging ourselves and being harsh on ourselves, instead showering ourselves with more love. You know, um, this, 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 um, this, call from your future self here pile number one that the way through whatever you're being called to face the cycle of repetition that you are being called to face it's through appreciating and blessing more of your life and yourself life supports life i was called and i didn't know why to Take the deck for Mother Isis. She is a goddess connected to uh, the archetype of the mother, but also fertility, the abundance. The more you give love to yourself, especially with this blue flame. Some of you, you know what I, I would suggest as a healing meditative practice? You could work. Uh, some of you, if you have access to do YouTube membership with the Mercury Frequency, and I would just call on, because remember, Mercury is the magician card. Your words and thoughts are highly supportive of your healing. And I would say I am calling upon the blue flame of pure divine love to clear my chakras. I allow this flame from my crown, my third eye my throat and go all the way down to be cleansed and showered with divine love from source and spirit you know some type of channeling whatever words come to you but i would like imagine this source and especially calling on this blue flame and some of you if you don't know about the blue flame um, of of pure divine love trust that this is a universal concept that even if you don't know much, you can just word it and feel its, feel its presence. I don't know why, but I'm going to give you an example. Okay, I, I was raised in a Jewish family. And I was not really raised uh, religiously. Okay, but I remember that there was a lot of stigma and wounds around Christ okay, as a Jew, or, and I never really understood why, and when I had my spiritual awakening, I was like, I want to understand Christ consciousness, and I was guided 
to do what is called a novena, a nine days of prayer. And I decided to do nine days with Mother Mary because I wanted to go to Christ consciousness. So learning about Jesus, its presence, its teaching. So I thought that first I'm going to meditate with the mother <laughs> of this energy. So I spent nine days uh, praying to Mother Mary so I could understand this energy. Okay. And miracles happen miracles in my life it was amazing and I knew nothing because I didn't study the religious text I just call upon the energy so it could bring me the teachings and then I moved on to nine days with Jesus Christ amazing things happen again once again and then I did a third novena uh, you know I was taking a little few weeks break in between but it was like pretty much one each month and then I did one novena with God the energy of God and whom oh, oh my I mean I love calling upon certain energy so some of you okay it could be the energy of the blue flame it could be also blue flame with mother Isis it could be um you know mother Mary if that is something that resonates with you more but I don't know why but I felt that for some of you dedicating yourself to something just that is called novenas um I'm not following it according, you know, religious, Christian, Catholic ways. Um, it was more like the repetition of meditating with a certain presence, with a certain energy. And miracles unfolded. Miracles. I am a very big fan of doing this. Uh, I used to actually lead novenas at the beginning of my spiritual awakening. And it would gather, sometimes I had over 100 people um, you know, meditating and praying to an energy altogether, and pff, everyone manifested really amazing things. I love the power of prayer, and I feel like this is something important for you in whatever shape and form you're going to manifest this. Okay, let's work with the tarot cards and see if we have further messages for you. Pile number one, okay, my dear cycle breaker. As far as the support, you know, that you're being guided to channel from your future self, to manifest some things that are meant for you to receive, meant for you to um, manifest from the inside out. When I was meditating on what pick a card for this energy I, I should choose, the word inner world, inner alchemy, inner, was repeatedly coming up. Okay, and I'm going to take a break here just to mention for some of you that are into astrology, okay, there is a placement called the IC, the same way your rising is AC, descendant DC, and then you have MC for your midheaven, you have the IC, which is your inner world. This is your secret world, this is the underworld of your life, of your persona, of your of yourself, okay? Um, you might want to look at where you have this placement, okay? You might want to look at the messages from your future self, from your inner world, the I see. If you don't know how to find it, you can um, email me, okay? If you comment, it's going to be hard for me to explain it, um, but yes. The zodiac placement of your IC. Okay? Feels important. I feel I'm going to <laughs> let all the piles know about this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why am I sorry? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Those two and two. Let's see. Ooh. Number 11 with justice. Okay. You know here, with the teaching of Sagittarius, there is a placement we're going to review also about karma. About making sure you're rebalancing the scales within yourself. Let's see some of those messages. Interesting, we have two piles. Hmm. I feel this is going to be the black little kitty cat and the white. Let's see. Let's see. We have the Hierophant with the Two of Wands. Okay. Your future self seems to have 
to, you know, here it's like, it's not something you should fear because it seems that through meditation, through accessing meditation practices, okay, you're going to have a certain guidance from your future self about specific actions to take, but it is hidden to you. So I did suggest to work with the Mercury frequency, but that's only accessible if you have access to the YouTube membership, all levels of membership. So we're going to see if there is another frequency that wants to be uh, highlighted here for this access for everyone. We'll see. In the light, we have the King of Wands and ooh, the Two of Cups. You know, I, I feel this is so interesting. Let me see. You know what I feel here with the Two of Cups? The Two of Cups, when I connect to where its placement is in the Zodiac Wheel, would connect to uh, closer to the constellation Cyrus. Because remember, we had some multidimensional aspect here. And I would say for some of you, okay, if you want to work with the Blue Flame and do a cleansing from top, down so you can shower and allow more of that energy to come and manifest okay um you're going to want to use cyrus okay so i'm gonna write all this so mercury or cyrus um for you my dear ones to work with the blue flame okay and that's going to support you with this channeling there is, you, you see here in the light, you know there are certain actions that need to be taken in. When I have this King of Wands that comes up, the way he does, you know, map out, I always feel like there's something in your chart. There might be a connection to the stars. It might be from Cyrus. It might be from Orion. Okay, so working, maybe some of you even, it could be the Pleiades if you're feeling a call. So I'm going to also list for you the Starseed Music playlist. So you can, Starseed Music playlist. Um, so you can work with one star system because interestingly, this is my, this is called the Starseeds Oracle deck. Okay. This is a Starseed um, channeling here. So let's see if there's something else from your future self. Now that we know we have to work with your astrology, some of the cycles that you've repeated, they are part of you breaking the chains and manifesting a life that you will love. Okay, something different than where you come from. But it's almost like the freedom from breaking away from a certain cycle a certain attraction of repetition is a gift, not only to yourself, but as a vibrational gift to all the ones that need and have signed up to be a cycle breaker. Okay. So wh whenever you're able to, to devote, and there's a lot of devotion here. I feel as some of you, maybe uh, that's something that you want to use for the next you might do a nine-day uh, novena, or you might even do 11. When I was working with Kundalini and working uh, daily, a meditation that was 45 minutes long, and I did it for exactly 10 days. On the 11th day, I had this whole quantum shift. It, it, it blew my mind. I could never forget it. Uh, but that was when I was working my, with Kundalini. So some of you, whatever resonates with you, but there's a certain devotion. If you really feel that in this phase, especially this phase is not that long, you know, December 15, it's like 20 days. So in that period of time, it's actually a very good opportunity for you to channel messages from your future self, specific actions that are meant for you to manifest. And some of you, if you're looking for love in all your relationship, but in particular romantic love, mm -hmm, this is going to uh, be a great time for you to provide with the 
energy um, that is needed, abundance. When your heart's attention is to serve humanity, doors of abundance naturally open. Do you remember how I told you like when you devote yourself to uh, break those chains? Realize one thing is that you're vibrationally gifting everyone that has signed up or has this this soul contract with uh, ending karmic patterns. You're gifting them the the the, the vibration of, of of support of abundance of love that it is possible it can be done you know it's like when we witness people that um achieve like world records and things like that all of a sudden other people once they see it they believe it but you as a cycle breaker you that are listening and happen to choose this reading that means that you might be even in the greater position where you don't even need to see it to go and go after it, thrive for it. And that's what your future self wants you to understand and go after. If you know it is possible for you to manifest a love in the expression, you know, even if it hasn't manifested just yet, Know that your devotion and your spiritual communication and everything that you're doing, especially if you're going to um, set a, a particular intention for a certain amount of days, this is going to open up a gateway of abundance that is connected to everything that you're meant to manifest. I love this for you, my dear pile number one. Uh, you know, if that is you, drop me a star. Drop me a star, I will know. It's like, drop me a star because of your star connection. This is like something unique. Um, and I will know that you're, com you know, you're committing to it. I want to do this. You know, you could, yeah, put a star. If you want to put like, I think there's a little emoji now that has like a chain that breaks. Uh, but I will understand. And um, I will salute you because this is, you know, this is something that, we signed up for um i really relate to to this work as well so i'm thanking you for all your light work for your presence i'm sending you many blessings ahead namaste hi pile number two welcome to your message from your future self i have listed down below a link to the mercury and sagittarius reading um when we had messages from your past self it seems that it's might be a clue as far as the merge of past, present, and future, okay? Something that came up also for pile number one and that felt relevant for all piles. Some of you, if you are into astrology, looking at your inner world, because through the power of words, we create worlds, okay? There is a placement in your natal chart called the Imun Coeli, and it's indicated with I, C letters, two letters, I and C, and it's at towards the bottom. Look at the zodiac sign where you have your Imun Coeli, I, C, or what I like to call your inner underworld, okay? There's something here um, that might want to emerge, a certain treasure, okay, that your future self and with the help of your past self, understanding that you are a multidimensional being, okay, that is here to bring something unique. You chose the card, you know, the edge. Take a chance, do something different. I felt like I needed to give you like a little pep talk. Maybe some of you, um, that's something you do for others most of the time. Um, that you need to also return the favor to yourself. We have here, as far as zodiac signs, Sagittarius, Aquarius, Cancer, and Pisces. Okay, let's see the little booklet. I was inspired to read it for pile number one, and I really enjoyed it, so let's do this for you as well. There are few places more exhilarating than where stones meet. See at the edge of a coastal cliff. Below you, the water is lapping. Before you, the sun is rising or setting on the horizon. And around you, a wild wind may be blowing. All the elements are there as you stand on the edge of something and at the beginning of something too. 
something new. The vast horizon encourages us to see things from a different point of view. It whispers promises of new possibilities, of being and trying something new, of leaping into the void of what might be. However, what might be cannot be dreamed into without first releasing the certainty of what once was, of gathering up our courage to try something new. The edge card is a symbol of truly living, of finding the courage to be bold and leap. It beckons us to be brave, to have no regrets, to take a chance and do something unexpected, to try doing something different, to step out into the unknown. Maybe you feel that a change is coming, but, or perhaps you're feeling restless, yearning for something new. Maybe you're frustrated or bored with the status quo and long to truly live. This card encourages you to stretch out of your comfort zone, go beyond your normal, and do something you've never done before, to dive into the unknown. Wow. The Soul Inquirer says, what exciting new experience would you like to have? How can you do something different today? Mm. Okay, so there is definitely something that is shifting in your reality. And I feel for you, pile number two. It's due to a shift inside yourself, your inner world. All the work you've done on yourself, whatever shape and form that looks like in your life, okay, whatever expression of it, it has given birth to something, a seed, that is maybe like, you know, if it was a garden, like a different plant, something new, something maybe you didn't think could grow into your life, could manifest. So we're going to get some messages here for you, pile number two, because your future self is is trying to highlight, you know, uh, the change that is upcoming in your life due to the efforts you provided, you know, in the past, because there's a connection to the past self, but also that means past effort. We're going to get some cards and see. Oh, all right. So three cards. I'm going to stop here. We're going to look at those cards. We have first wisdom. See your adversaries as opportunities to expand your spiritual light. Then we have light. It is time to reveal your radiant light to the world. Hmm. And in a world, <laughs> oh, with an S, worlds, your external world is a reflection of your inner world. Okay, so definitely been, pile number two, you feel like someone that has been doing the work, okay? Uh, wow, the queen of heaven. The queen of heaven, the divine empress of the skies acknowledges your feminine authority now as a man or a woman you have a life of spiritual leadership to bring qualities of mercy compassion and wisdom into the world wow a lot of wisdom a lot of wisdom so let's see what else wisdom about what okay i i have this deck that is very much connected to um the thought patterns, okay? And let's see what wants to come forward. I feel like you have a lot of things um, that are, um, you know, part of your, you know what I'm seeing? Like, you know, like a panel, like you have a variety of skills, okay? And mainly two are of the essence at this time. One is probably about success mindset because it says here everything i touch is a success behind the card it says i now establish a new awareness of success i know i can be as successful as i make up my mind to be i move into the winning circle golden opportunities are everywhere for me prosperity of every kind is drawn to me wow and then we have, I am beautiful and everybody loves me. Oh, self-love and appreciation. Wow. And you know what I feel is that 
you've understood that your level of self-appreciation and self-love is equivalently equal or, you know, is matching how much success and abundance is coming to you. Part number two. I radiate acceptance. (laughs) I am deeply loved by others. Love surrounds me and protects me. Wow. Okay, pile number two, your future self, because there is, it speaks of something different and new. Maybe some of you, that's something you had not manifested yet, or that you started seeing signs of manifestation or feeling successful through all the work and investment of healing yourself, of devoting yourself to loving yourself and whatever, you know, some of you, I feel that even the concept of loving yourself was almost foreign. Okay. And it, it, it called you on a spiritual quest, you know, that could be due to, you know, your, uh, upbringing, things you expect, experience in your inner world. I do feel that for you, um, working with the star seed constellation that resonates with you, or even uh, the new earth miracle. Yes, because that it's almost like you you're on the edge of a miracle. If you if you resonate with the miracle and you feel a little far from manifesting this, okay. Pile number one, and you hesitated to take pile number one, go and check out that message, okay? Especially if you resonate with being a a chain or cycle breaker. I'm going to put the new earth frequency for you. Um, it, It really feels like you're on that precipice of a miracle that is, you know, matching you know, I can have love and I can have success I, I, in, in, in a career, you know, a career, a successful career, a sense of achievement um, that is beautiful. It feels very yin-yang energy. So let's get some tarot guidance for you, pile number two, about this um, miracle that is, co- is coming. Wow, okay. As a package. <laughs> You're getting a bundle. <laughs> Okay, a bundle of joy, a page of swords. Okay, when I said this, and it's not going to resonate for everyone, when I say bundle of joy, I saw a baby. Some of you, if that's something you're trying to manifest, it seems that um, th- th- and you may have experienced uh, you know, difficulty to get pregnant. Um, there is definitely a shift in that energy through the work that you had to invest in. Then we have the Eight of Pentacles, the King of Cups, as well as, ooh, the High Priestess. Mm. Let's see this. Okay. You know, your future self is saying that, um, there was some the, some of you signed up to work with the understanding of the laws of the universe you know understanding that how much you in pour like you pour love into yourself no matter the mistakes no matter uh the things that go wrong you you, you instead of judging criticizing and bringing yourself down when you start shifting this it it was also um energetically going to open up gateways for opportunities that were going to be supportive of you instead of you know criticizing competition like you know hard hardships and things like that it's like you signed up because the page of sword is a little bit um immature in its knowledge it's like saying your future self is that this is something you signed up to learn to learn from within to learn through you know here it's hard work you have that's something you wanted to master master the keys to success and love maybe 
have it all. Like, you know, knowing that you're a conscious creator and that you can have it all. And obviously, you know, um, with every one and everything in mind and in heart, you know, um, going after a certain vision, vision that was unseen. There's something here that very deep for you, pile number two, about understanding that Maybe you felt like, well, it didn't work in the past and this didn't pan out. It's like you signed up to understand and to craft your own self-mastery, your own pathway so you can access a vision of something. And here getting the high priestess is like it's unknown. We have a group of people watching this. It's like whatever it is that it is your vision, whatever it is that you're supposed to channel. You're now on this edge, on this precipice. So work with the miracle frequency. I definitely uh, feel this. You might want to call on just the light of the heavens. I'm hearing light source energy flowing through you. Okay. F with the earth miracle uh, frequency. So you can, because uh, this is for the new earth. So you go after this next level. Okay, so your future self is saying, you know, um, you came here to self-master this type of concept. So that's beautiful guidance from your higher self as far as your manifestation. I don't know why, but I feel like this card on the side wants to speak. So I'm going to take it because it was kind of calling me and it was saying something about the body. My body is always working towards optimum health. My body wants to be whole and healthy. I cooperate and become healthy, whole and complete. I listen with love to my body's messages. Okay, some of you may be part of learning self-love was through some of um, manifestation through your health. Okay, if you have six house placement in astrology, in your natal chart, you're always going to come across you know certain things with the health department okay and especially realizing that your daily routine your daily habits they're either helping you thrive or they're not okay so there's something here that wanted to be said from your future self here pile number two regarding your body your connection to your body it's almost like, you know what I'm feeling? Is this, because you are a part that seems to have really like wanted at, at a core level, soul's level, to self-master the understanding of certain specific or all <laughs> universal laws of this universe, okay? There is a message here for you to realize that your body as a temple is like you being God for this planet a, that is your body. Your body is a planet. Your body is its own uh, micro system. It's a, it's ecosystem, okay? And your voice with your thought commands. It's like the voice of God to your cells. And it will command either health or other things, you know, and it depends on what you nourish. So there's a lot of messages about nourishment and understanding how the manifestation of your body, uh, you have maybe to go through certain ailments, disease, moments where your health was not optimal. So you would go within and fix aka, your creation, aka, your cells and your body. Yeah. Wow. What a message. Okay, I feel there's something more here. So what does the future self want to share? For well, pile number two. Okay, there's two cards. Let's see. Okay, the ace of cups and the hanged man. Okay. Uh, this is interesting because I felt it when I said moments of uh, not your health not being optimal. I remember the last time that I really got sick was, oof, when was that? Mm, I think it was uh, Christmas 2022. Okay, yes. Really sick. 
for days and days. But it was the first time that I knew that my I had resisted the slowing down or receptivity of certain important guidance from my higher self, future and past, okay? But especially it was future because I was about to make certain decisions for uh, 2023. And it literally, I, I saw how when I was sick, I was purging certain layers and I was making space for receiving certain guidance that if I had not slowed down, if I had not taken the amount of hours resting and, and just chilling, I would have not received. And it was, it was the first time that I really saw how my body was almost like going against me because I was resisting, uh, slowing down. I was trying to make the decisions based on, on my mind versus from a place not just of heart, but of soul. So I had to be in stillness okay and a lot of miracles unfolded for me 2023 2024 you know uh, because of that moment so there's some certain things that for you some of you you know um being in a place of caring or rest if you're currently experiencing any type of ailment disease no, even I feel so some of you, even injury, you know, I've seen sometimes like people say like, oh, I want to go back to the gym. I want to, and then they injure themselves uh, almost like right away. And it's like it, they, they, their enthusiasm falls down or falls apart. And usually it's because the body is saying like, hey, the way we were doing it before it, yes, you think you, it was working, but obviously it was not. Because otherwise you wouldn't have stopped or this wouldn't have happened. There's certain wisdom here from your body, you know. As far, and some of you, I feel like maybe uh, if it is about going back to the gym or some routine, uh, make sure that you review how you used to do things. Because now you're, you're, you're an expression of yourself that is much more loving, that understands that when you put the effort in a loving way, and that doesn't mean like, it, you know, the mentality for health, uh, especially uh, weight gain or, you know, like bodybuilding. It was very much about no pay, no gain. And I feel like you know that is not something that is true energetically. You, you, ha you can invest yourself in a loving way without having to go to the threshold of being sick, being injured. Okay, there, so there's there's some guidance for you, pile number two, that fe feels very subtle, connected to your body, to the wisdom of your body, to the love that you provide to your body, as a result, manifesting uh, more success, more abundance, and leading you towards, you know, with your self-mastery and routine, manifesting the vision that you have for yourself, for your life, for this ultimate success, Okay. That's what I have as far as those messages. Thank you for your presence here, pile number two. Please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your messages from your future self. So you picked a beautiful card of the wisdom keeper, a new perspective, study and learning. I love this. I just so love, love this energy of the card. Um... What came through for the piles as a guidance according to the zodiac placement? Yes, I suggested Mercury, but something also came through, which was interesting, was the power of the voice, which is the power of Mercury. When you work with your Kundalini, Mercury is in the throat chakra, the magician energy, how we create worlds and also new experiences, new perspective, new understanding um, through our words, through our thoughts, okay? And there's a placement, if some of you like to work with astrology in your chart, that is called the Imun Koeli, and you can see it through uh, the indication of the letters I and C. You know, you have the rising sign, A, C, D, C is descending, M, C is your midheaven, and I, C is your inner world, okay? So, if you look at the zodiac sign where you have your inner world, your imun koeli, and relate to this, there might be another 
message from your future self okay it it came up also strongly i had felt it before but i didn't want to overwhelm people with this type of astrology knowledge and then i was like well you know if it's going to resonate with some people it will if, if not it won't <laughs> but i know that some of you are into astrology and that's something that interests you you will get deeper messages from your future self from going within you know that's where the concept is okay so i want to read a little booklet and i am not prepared with <laughs> where it is in oh well, it just came through okay in this little booklet so the wisdom keeper the oldest known whole rocks on earth found in canada date back around 4.3 billion years Whoa. A length of time that's impossible to comprehend. For comparison, the first humans emerged around 2 million years ago in Africa. A mere blink of an eye in a, the lifetime of our planet's most ancient stones. The stones are wisdom keepers, powerful teachers, healers, and guardians. They preserve, hold, and tell our stories infused with the wisdom of the cycles. Our ancient stones show us the grace and gift of surrender. In their presence, we're invited to take a different perspective, to shift into humble unknowingness as we wander. How many people like us have they seen come and go? How many civilizations have they stood witness to? The Wisdom Keeper card holds ancient knowledge and stories. Many of us have been severed from our ancestral wisdom teachings, but what if it's possible to reconnect with this wisdom through stones that hold the memories? This card invites us to reconnect with some form of study and learning. It may be in the traditional sense, or it could be something more mystical and direct. Here the soul inquiry is, what are you fascinated by or in awe of? How are you being called to be a student of life? Wow, this is... You know what I feel for you? Um, pile number three. It's like your future self is sharing with you. And by the way, I did put in the uh, description box the Mercury and Sagittarius pick a card where we have messages from the past self, okay? Um, because what I feel, which is interesting compared to other piles, is that you're here to keep alive certain traditions, certain wisdom, certain mystical knowledge, esoteric. It's, it's almost like your future self is sharing with you that you're part of, of a lineage, of a channel for a certain ancestral wisdom to stay alive. Just like the rocks, you, you're here to continue a certain flow. And I, I wouldn't be surprised... It might not resonate for everyone, but I want to share it because I feel it. Uh, you might be meeting a mentor uh, or, or there's certain mentorship around a certain uh, topic that your soul is craving to learn or craving to tap into. Yeah. There's, there's certain, like, there's, or it could be just you sign up for certification, you know. There's just some type of... Uh, through this phase, a certain interaction, knowledge, opportunity, uh, meeting with someone um, that is coming to fruition here as part of um, the ancestral lineage that you are meant to keep alive. Wow, that is just... Wow, I got almost like chills everywhere. I had to <laughs> put down my sleeves. Whew! Whew! You know what's interesting? Look at this. When I did say I had to put down my sleeves, I actually heard the opposite of when we roll up our sleeves is that we need to work harder. Okay? And here it's almost like, no, you got to flow more. Okay? Which is interesting because just next to me, look at what I have. 
I am flexible and flowing. Very much in alignment with this. Okay, so let's read this. Okay. Up. All right. We have, I am open to the new and changing. Every moment presents a wonderful new opportunity to become more of who I am. I flow with life easily and effortlessly. So there is there's something through this phase, okay, that is flowing to you. Don't, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I just was, I was going to say, don't try harder. And I saw this hand and I was like, oh, we have something that wants to be handed to us. Look at this. Look at this beautiful energy of giving you a hand. Oh my God, I can't believe the word behind. Portal of light. It is only this physical reality that is bound by time and space. You are a conscious being on levels beyond the physical world. You are guided to work with your healing powers beyond the confines of time and space. You will not become ungrounded through your such spiritual work. You are not leaving your earthly connection behind. You are merely adding to it. Okay, this is so interesting and I'm going to share it. I felt it at this stage and I held my mouth <laughs> because... Um, this is something that I'm preparing for 2025 with some of you that are, you know, um, wanting to deepen your connection to your astrology, to working uh, with healing uh, practices where I'm going to be offering sacred geometry, aka some medicine wheels connected to your planets, connected to your chart. And this is so interesting because, you know, here you can see there's a circle. There's this energy of, you know, a grid. So it's working with grid. Some of you, you know, I'm very fond of sacred geometry because of the way also music works in sacred geometry. As someone that has knowledge around music technology, it's only normal that it flows into a manifestation with sacred geometry to open up portals. Portals of energy for manifestation to flow with more ease, flexibility, accessing the Akash, accessing the memory. So that's something that some of you, you know, if you are interested, please send me an email. I will know who those people are. I will see how I'm being called to um, share this. But this is something that's coming up for 2025. I was told to hold off because of the Mercury retrograde. Okay, because probably there's certain things that I'm still gathering for how to share this. Okay, some of you, that might be something. Um, if you resonate with this pile as far as being someone that is here to channel some ancestral wisdom, healing, holistic practices, or whatever it is, um, what I have channeled and I've been working for now over two years, okay, um, cause you know, I have to rehearse all those practices before I share them. Um, they are based with sacred geometry and helping gather from the Akash. Okay. Some of you, if you, that's something that interests you, just email me. I'll put you in my little checklist. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I the cards just were very strong for me to have to share this. Okay. Now I feel this card still. There's there's more energy coming from Isis. Maybe you're connected to your vision, connected. You know, this energy of Horus is is almost like shaped into the pineal gland. If you look at how uh, the brain is and what is going on in the brain, this this energy of the eye, the eye that sees all. Okay. Oh, wow. This is a card of initiation. So, And you have studies. So some of you, if you pick this pile according to whatever, maybe it called you, maybe it's your zodiac placement, there's definitely something that your future self is saying. As you allow yourself to flow more, to be flexible uh, through Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, okay, through those 20 days that we have, you're opening up a portal to become a, a student there's definitely here an energy and I you know relating to what I share with you guys um 
this makes sense to me now even more so because I was like okay ready to go and then I heard like uh, 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 mercury retrograde you know that's not a good time to start things <laughs> and I was like oh okay and now this is coming up you know I do have my um inner world in Gemini if some of by Orion so some of you if um if you want pile number one had guidance even pile number two to work with the starseed music playlist um that i feel for you uh it could be the pleiades would be more here you could be orion or pleiades again i'm gonna write it down in case that resonates i have orion and pleiades okay Especially as this retrograde is happening, there is some opposition between Mercury and Regal, the brightest star of Orion, and uh, Jupiter retrograde is there. So we have two planets that are retrograde. One that is connected to uh, the magician card, Mercury, and Jupiter, which is the Wheel of Fortune. And that wheel is actually creating portals. So there's something that wants to flow before action is being taken. I didn't read the card, so let's do this. When you are being initiated into the divine mysteries of light, love and power, there are moments of profound challenge. The key is to find the light within the challenge, the opportunity for growth that can transform any challenge into an experience of healing. With compassion and cleverness, you will not burn during your challenges. You shall thrive. Wow. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. This. Okay. That's a starseed deck. Let's see what more messages want to come and flow for you. Oh my God. Do you see this? feels like another portal it does look like a full moon let me look at my calendar for you my dear ones okay as far as our next full moon um that would be in december on the 15th oh wow full moon in gemini so even more so if some of you picked around gemini but that that is um Highlighting again uh, the constellation Orion here as far as the placement in Western astrology. Let's see what we have. Wow, creation. Being creative is a wonderful way of witnessing the unfolding of your limitless creative soul. That actually the 15 is when the retrograde ends. Wow, you are like there's something. Okay. There's something that you're meant to share that is part of an ancestral lineage, some continuity of a certain wisdom, okay? That through this retrograde, you're going to receive and be initiated, you know, maybe pieces of information you're missing, pieces of putting together some type of creation. Trust, pile number three, trust the flow of the cosmos going through you trust your wisdom trust your guidance trust the support of the ancestors or just the support of your higher self because um it's almost like you were designed and when i mean design i feel like it's in your chart you were designed for this purpose for this channeling of a specific wisdom of specific tradition of a specific knowledge this is something, you know, uh, we're entering the golden ages again. Some of you, uh, you know, study a little bit of that concept. And we went on earth through dark ages. So we're bringing back, we're moving back towards the light. Okay. But we had before the dark ages, we had also, you know, ancient times where it was also golden ages. And there was wisdom. There was, uh, I, I don't know where that came from, but I heard um, crystal technology, which we can see also is manifested in you, some of our technology nowadays, you know, with the phones and everything, using the minerals. So there, there's some sacred knowledge that still wants to flow through you in an expression that wants to support life, 
okay, that has the wisdom of the things that has been seen civilization after civilization, ages after ages, centuries after centuries, okay? Let's get some more details about this initiation phase for you, uh, for this retrograde that you can see is leading towards a certain creation manifestation um, that is important for, because, you know what, I think for some of you, you were you were part of the wisdom keeper. You were part of keeping a certain wisdom alive, a certain knowledge alive. And some of us, you might feel that, um, but nowadays I don't, I don't see other people with this type of expression or with this type of concept. It's not because we don't see it nowadays that it didn't exist previously. Okay even if it's not in the books of history. This is something very deep. We're talking billions of years, okay? So some of you realize that uh, if it makes no sense to your logical mind, that doesn't mean it didn't exist previously because with this type of cars and energy, it's definitely something that you're helping keep alive, okay? This existed already. Whether you're able to prove it or whatever, this is something that existed already. And that you're either resurrecting, bringing back to life, keeping alive because of your own connection to uh, source and your ancestors, to your lineage. Let's see what we have. We have the two of pentacles. Okay. With the nine of pentacles. The Queen of Swords and the Five of Wands. You know, this is where I, especially under this line of energy, when I said, you know, this whole, <laughs> this whole speech to you, as far as um, it's not because you are not seeing anything similar you know, a certain practice, a certain expression, it, that doesn't make sense to others necessarily because, well, that's the vibrational needs that they have to uh, believe, okay? Um, you might, there might be some conflicts, you know, it's almost like some of you drop the, the worries or the concerns that you have about how are others going to perceive this? How are others going to receive this? It's not, it's not, it's not, it does not matter. It does not matter. What matters is you standing your ground with, uh, there's something about being, again, flexible with the two of pentacles, yin yang, working with your feminine, with your masculine. And here it's almost like, um, you know, some of you may be journaling, uh, taking, making sure you take time for yourself and then acting on certain truth, on certain insight, on certain guidance, especially this uh, queen. Look at her throne. She's got stars, okay? So a connection to the stars of the wisdom of the stars. Again, Orion could be a strong uh, support for you, pile number three, because uh, the teachings of Orion are very much about the mastery between and merge, convergence of emotional, both emotional and intellectual uh, intelligence. You know, not letting your emotional state sway you, especially here. How are you going to over worry? Okay, sway you and not following up with the guidance and actions. You shouldn't ignore how you feel. But don't let it discourage, uh, like uh, disempower you from what you're hearing right now. Because if you chose this pile, if you happen to listen to this, okay, this is important stuff. This is important stuff for you to create, create something that the world needs. It needs it. It's, it's, it's something um, that needs to see the light, the light of creation. Okay, let's get another message here for you. Okay, choice. By staying conscious in your thoughts, you guide your journey in the direction of choice. You're going to be deciding, you know, 
creation it, it, it is a choice. How you choose, you know what? How you feed your thoughts is going to be important in this initiation. Okay. There's and and you know what also? Some of you, maybe what you're actually channeling, part of this healing is helping people make another choice. And that feels a little bit like um you know what it feels like? It feels like um, helping people purge karma. You know, when you don't have the experience and the wisdom and something happens and it manifests and then, yes, you repeat it. And you repeat it until you actually understand it. There might be something here, um, especially with the choice. It feels a little bit like if I had to put it towards a card of the tarot, it would be uh, the zero card, which is, uh, the fool card. You know, we're making decisions where we're learning and the fool card creates opportunities associated to Uranus. It's the evolution. Oh, wow. You're here to support humanity to evolve. And part of this knowledge is helping humanity to evolve, is helping, uh, humans make different choices. I would say also work with the New Earth Miracle as part of the Starseed Music playlist. It is listed down below. Uh, it will definitely give you some nice insights on how to um, manifest this, on how to uh, maybe some of you, again, you're meant to cross path with certain opportunities that are going to support this great shift. It is needed. No, it is it, like, you know, it's like... Pfft. You ha yeah, I, I'm so like mind blown about this. I remember when I saw this card, how much, uh, how drawn I was to this energy, you know, this glow. And some of you, if you're here, obviously there's something calling you, you know, the glow, there's a glow, there's a certain creation, there's a certain um, manifestation, uh, maybe also helping people give them back their free will. You know, understanding that they can change their fate. They can change based on, you know, doing this type of inner work that I know you've done. Because obviously you're here for this type of contract. That's what I have for you, my dear pile number three. What a message. I am sending you so many blessings, so much love and light. And please remember to like this video as it supports the channel to grow. Namaste.